Hey guys, welcome back to Parkadec University. In this episode, we'll be teaching you some of the basics of fireworks and the controller, and what you can give you some ideas how to use them to uplift your parks and make them cool or make them more interesting, stuff like that. So, first thing first is where to find your controller and your fireworks and speakers. You're, now everything's been reorganized to an effect window. So we have effects right here. Controller, emitters, fireworks, lighting, and speakers. So controllers are actually quite basic. This one's been recolored. How funny. Um, well, that this is the effect controller. The effect controller has a window of this size. So you can actually change the size of this window. And this tells you all the duration of your effects, how long the show is, on assign effects, and things like that. So the first things first is to get a firework to be ready or to get a firework onto your timeline here is just to say click to create an effect and it says unassign and you get this little dropper symbol and we can click on this firework launcher right here and there we go we have our first little firework so it's default on five of uh, yeah five height we can change this up or down as much as we want we can also change the duration of where the firework will land on this little circle grid so let's say it goes uh, this far, and we're going to pick a different firework. Let's go with, um, yeah, we'll pick, stick with this one, and we'll make it, I don't know, blue. We'll make it blue. Yeah, let's also change it to nighttime. Oh, I need to turn on fast for um, play. Oh, funny, I need to push play. So here we're at night, and we're going to test the firework, and it launches, and you see the firework launch. And so we can change by dragging, well, it, you can't drag this, you can drag this around anywhere you want. You can't, you can change the size of the firework, you can change the trails, the trails either smoke or sparkles, I think sparkles make it look like this, so you see a little, yeah, there's a little blue sparkle that follows it, and then the firework is quite large. And as you make it taller, the little thing in the window actually gets longer. So you do have to keep in mind in that. So like say if I made it 14 high, it's almost a two second long firework. So it takes almost two seconds for it to get to its height and then explode. So kind of, it's kind of how that works. Now let's do some other like more complicated things. So let's say we have a firework show. We have a whole bunch of fireworks and sequences and doing some different wave patterns, stuff like that. But I want to add music to it. So again, you click on the timeline, you get a new effect to be unassigned and then you click on speaker and then the speakers actually has nothing attached to it right now it's completely blank until I pick a, a soundtrack so I'm gonna pick one from the game to make it easier let's pick um, uh, actually let's pick mid no let's pick Western so there now it's a full track that actually extends the entire time-lapse of this thing and it goes about two minutes long so that's actually pretty cool and if I play it, you hear music. And as the music plays, you can do whatever you want with the fireworks and things like that. So this is one way to do speaker stuff. And we also get rid of this so we can just tell. So the speaker is actually right here. It's actually quite small. We have nine different speakers in the window. Here's our nine different speakers. They do their things and stuff like that. And this is your basics so far of how to do fireworks. Um, the controller also can affect emitters, so every single emitter we have here from Big Splash, uh, Water Jets, Sparks, and Splash, Fog, they all can be affected. So those can be put into your fireworks shows too, or it makes effects for rides, which will all show you some effect ideas for some rides in a little bit. And I didn't realize it was going to rain in this, so how funny this is happening, but hey! It is what it is. Let's just fast forward so I can get rid of the rain. But, like, for example, if I put down... Actually, I want to put down some fire. So there's your fire, and I want to make it stop moving. So I just you make it connect. And I can change how long and how short the fire stays on. And then if I move to here... Oh, I forgot the music. Actually, fast forward is how funny. Um... That's hilarious. I didn't realize. Ah, see, I'm learning new things too as I do this. This is so funny. Um, so music actually fast forwards. That's really cool. 
Okay, it, back to what I was talking about. That just you can take all the effects in your window, in the effects window or the emitters, and then you can attach them to said pieces. So let's move on to the next thing that I usually use controllers on. I hope that this explains this pretty well. Um, yeah, I think that hopefully this explains well. So let's just move on to the next thing. So the next thing would be I've been playing around with lights because all the lights in the game, including path lights, wall lights, are can be triggerable or used on the controller. So I made a working cycle of traffic lights. Um, this was just kind of an easy way to, well it wasn't easy, it was, it was a fun way to experiment with a lighting sequence. So I have a cycle of when the cars would come up so it's red, stops, and then it turns green and they go and then yellow. I hid the controller inside this utility box like in real life and I kind of made two layers of lights at different time intervals and to change out how the cycling goes and I have in here is that I have a time interval of one second so the cycle looks like it's looping. Now in the controller we have different options to do things so manual is default you have to start it it's manual. Night change, it will start the fireworks show or show at night. Attraction is it will be tied into like let's say a flat ride, and you want and the moment the flat ride starts, the trigger will happen. Track segment is the same as attractions. You you uh, trigger a track, so a car rolls over that track segment, the effect starts. Path also does the same thing. So if a guest walks by and say an explosion happens, it, it activates when the guest walks into that path. So we have options to make our rides, your atmosphere, your park more interesting. So this is just one little example of what you can do with the controller without really using fireworks. I just kind of went with a ambiance effect with a traffic light. And yeah, so the next thing I want to show you is how to do a, a door for your dark ride because now doors are triggerable as well. They can be used in the controller. So I put down a ghost mansion ride and I'm going to make this medieval door work. So I'm going to create an effect, click on the door, and there I have the door. Now the door only opens for one second. I will show you how to make that go longer after I pick the track segment. So I'm going to pick the track in front of it. Now do keep in mind it picks the entire track piece. So I built this on two tiles of tracks. So this is a two sized piece of track. If you want to make it more simpler and more easier, try to make them one tile wide so that it's not as big as a trigger. But I want to keep it at two to show you that you have to do a timing thing with the door. So we're going to trigger it. So the moment the car reaches out this turn and hits the first segment of this switch, it activates. So let's first keep this open so we can see what we're doing. Activate the ride or put it in test and we're going to watch the car go around the curve and into the door and right now the door is sitting at one second duration we also have two de default states we have a disable and enable uh, enable so enable means that the door will be open disable means the door will be closed you can do the same thing with lights and fireworks fireworks don't do it sorry only lights and sp yeah, speakers don't do it either just yeah doors and things so there right, door open for one second that's not long enough so we're going to make it go longer. We're going to make it go like three seconds long. I think that's enough time for the door to be open for the car to reach it. Let's see. No, it's not. So I'm going to continue to fiddle with it as we sit here. Let's go six seconds. So you can drag the time. You don't have to go up here to do it, but you can do You can type in here as well to kind of do it. So here's six seconds. So it's going to be really long. Yeah, it's going to close right in front of it. See, I would have to build it um, a little bit better. Actually, let's, let's actually fix it. Now, the door is now glitching out. So because the door wasn't in motion, it should not do this. But let's say I actually make this door a more proper setup instead of doing it so long. So I'm going to edit the ride and make it down to one square. So now it's a very small set. So let's re-trigger, put it on the door. Uh, track segment one and let's say we have the door open for four seconds because we want the the car to go through it and close behind it 
So see if it works, okay? As the guests come around the corner, we're about to reach that first track segment and it's gonna go open. Dink, it's opening and is it four seconds too short? Yeah, four seconds is way too short. Let's say we do six seconds. Six seconds seems like a long enough thing to do it. Dink, let's see, six seconds is long enough. Will it clear it? Will it clear it? It clears it, kind of. Let's do a little bit, like six and a half. So 6.5. So it opens, the door is open, the car is coming through, and then it goes through, and then it's gonna close, and there you go. We have now a working dark ride door. And I'm really excited to use this for like an upcoming project for American Adventure. And this is gonna like change a whole bunch of things for people's rides and things, and it's just, oh, so cool. So I hope this little exploration through the like the launcher or through the firework controller and launcher and how to put things together, like how speakers work and some of the fireworks work. You can change the height and stuff like that. So um, yeah, this is one of many other episodes going to be based off of the new DLC because some new things popped up like, like the next episode probably will be on maybe shapes and stuff because we had some updates on shapes we got more shapes to play with and shapes are now easier to use i will probably showcase maybe something about a prop maybe making a, a creature so i hope this video gives you uh, insight on some of these mechanics and help you in your future builds for your parks and i will catch you guys all in the next architect university bye